Okie dokie. In this problem, they ask at which of the following points does the function have a maximum or minimum? In other words, we want to use the same process we did back here, and that is finding the critical points because those critical points are the possible locations for maximums or minimums. So the process will be finding f prime, setting it equal to zero, and then factoring a little bit here to solve for x. Once we have that x value, it should be our answer. Let's talk through the derivative for this one. We have an x term here and an x term here. These expressions or terms are being multiplied. Therefore, we must use the product rule. Hope you didn't forget it. We have, we could either call it a or b or f and g. I think in the past I used a and b, so we're going to stick with that. If we can call the first parentheses a, the second set b, we will find a prime, multiply it by b, hit it with the, <clears throat> excuse me, hit it with the addition, and then a and b prime. All right, so a prime derivative of e to the 2x is 2e to the 2x. The e term stays the same, leaving the 2x, but then we multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So actually a slight chain rule there as well. b is just 3x plus 4. a is the original e to the 2x, and b prime is 3. 3x plus 4 has a derivative of 3. Now, we want to set it equal to zero and factor. So factoring is going to look a little different. In this case, it's less of a quadratic factoring situation where it's like multiplying to some number, adding to some number. It's more of can we factor a greatest common factor out of this term and of this term? That greatest common factor would be e to the 2x. So then the question is what are we left with amongst these two main terms. We're left with the 2 and the 3x plus 4 for the first half. And then of the second half, we're just left with that 3. Setting this equal to 0, we have our two big factors. This one and this one. If we were to set this first one equal to 0, we would find no x values from it because e to the 2x could never equal 0. e to any power can never equal 0. So we sort of ignore this factor. It gives us no x values. While this one will definitely give us an x value. And whatever the solution is to this one will be our answer. So I'm going to go ahead and start by distributing the 2. We get 6x plus 8. And then we tack on this plus 3 equals 0. So we have 6x plus 11 equals 0. And we're solving for x. So we subtract 11, divide by 6. We have x equals negative 11 sixths, which is option C. And we're done because this is the x value that makes f prime equal to 0. Therefore, it's a possible location of a max or a min because it's a critical point. All right. Second example, very similar process, very similar format with the e term. So we have to use the product rule. Again, derivative of the first or a prime. Always start with a prime. a prime is negative 8 e to the negative 8 x. b is negative 2x minus 6. We do the plus, And then a is e to the negative 8x times b prime, the derivative of b, which is negative 2. We set this equal to 0. And simultaneously, I'll factor out the e to the negative 8x, leaving us with negative 8 times negative 2x minus 6, and then just minus 2, or plus negative 2, setting it equal to 0. This first term will never equal 0 because it's an e term, so we set the rest equal to 0. I'll distribute the negative 8 to get 16x 
and then plus 48 minus 2, we get 16x minus 46, or sorry, plus 46 equals 0. 16x equals negative 46. We divide by 16. I'm trying to think if there's any common factors besides 2, maybe a 4, but no, I don't think it works. So we'll do dividing each of these by 2, we get 23 and 8, and that might be it. Let's see if we have a negative 23 over 8. Looks like option D. Break out the eraser to see that D is our answer. Hope this process makes sense. Make sure to review product rule or just memorize it for this problem, whatever you need to do. Um, yeah, hope these examples help. If you have any questions, let me know.